Now, as you think about that, start to think of the three keys to success that Boy came up with for air-to-air -air combat. Because those three keys he distilled down to basically three principles. And then Boyd started to say, if this works for air-to-air -air combat, I wonder if it works for ground warfare. If this works for ground warfare, I wonder if it works for sports. If this works for sports, I wonder if it would work for business. And so he followed this throughout his career and throughout his life and, and came up with his theories that apply to everything. And it's, it's probably one of the most elegant things you've ever seen. So now we'll, we'll get back to that. I'll tell you the three things. First and foremost is agility. And you can think of all three of these things in the context of RFID, and I'll tie it back in just a second. But the first is agility. So that, that saber was slower. It couldn't turn as tightly on a radius, couldn't climb as high. But it had one very critical component that the, the uh, MiG didn't have. It had a hydraulic assist steering. So although it couldn't turn as tightly in a, in a bank turn, it could go from turning this way very quickly to turning that way. The MiG pilots, they were essentially directly connected to the, to the rudders and the ailerons, and they had, to, they had to work really hard to turn this thing. So it could turn tighter, but then to change directions, they had to work really hard. So a little bit into a dogfight, these Russian and Korean uh, pilots were getting more and more worn out, and they couldn't keep up with the speed of change because they didn't have the agility. So that's, that's component number one. Number two is visibility. Now let's go back and take a look, if we can, at these two aircraft. The F-86 Sabre, if you look up there, it's, kinda, it's a little bit tough to see on the screen. It's a big bubble canopy. A pilot could see literally 360 degrees around them, aerodynamically much less efficient than other planes out there, so it slowed it down. But the benefit of being able to see 360 degrees in your opponents when you're in a, a very fast moving dogfight was critical. Go down, fast forward another 10 or 15 years to the F-4 Phantom, and you see that canopy very aerodynamically built into the hull of the, of the aircraft, leaving a blind spot from 4 o'clock all the way around to 8 o'clock. So much lower visibility. The last point is a little bit more uh, esoteric and something that takes a little bit longer to describe. But it's called the OODA loop. Has anyone heard of this? Tom's heard of this, I bet. Yeah, a couple of folks have heard of it. OODA stands for observation, orientation, decision, and then action. So this is an iterative loop of what's happening in your world right now. It starts out with, with the observation. I look around, I see 80 people in a room, I see four people standing in back, I'm oriented, I'm, I'm observing things. Then I'm thinking, okay, based on my background, I'm a speaker, these guys standing up are bored, this guy up front's falling asleep, this, this guy over here is uh, texting on his cell phone. I'm, I'm orienting myself based on my position. Then I go back and I decide to do something. So I'm going to clap to wake this guy up. And then I make that decision, that's an action. Then I go back and observe again. And then I orient, and then I decide, and I take an action. And I observe again after that action. Now this, this whole process, and your orientation is, is determined by your cultural background, your training, your heritage, where you fit in with things. This whole process happens continually in any competition. And Boyd's theory is that whoever gets through this process fastest has a much bigger advantage over their opponent. And you can think about it, and I saw this in sports, in the, in the best races I ever had, I saw this uh, just spot on, that everything started to move in slow motion. And people looked like they were moving in molasses, and I was just in control of everything. And time really stretched out. And you've, you've probably heard other athletes say that when you hear Tom Brady or, or Michael Jordan or something say, you know, I, I really felt, or, or someone like a, uh, you know, like a David Ortiz say that it, the ball just looked really big. I was seeing it really well. That's going through the OODA loop faster. That's, that's having a different orientation. So these three things are also the key to an RFID deployment. The agility, being able to use technology that is much faster to make decisions than people to decide and to control things 
is a huge advantage. Visibility, RFID gives you a, a serialized data component. You can look at, at piece parts, you can look at each one. And then decision loop speed, if all of this is automated and you've got machine to machine communication talking, then really what you're left with is a machine, something that has great processing power, going through decisions much quicker than any humans can. So, so think about this in the context of the known solution today of a barcode. If you've got a barcode and, and I'm receiving this, and I'm receiving this case of goods, and I'm a dock worker, and I'm barcode scanning each one, and I might have missed that one because it's a little bit torn off. And I barcode scan this one, and it says it doesn't belong there. I got break coming up. I'll deal with that in a little bit. Or I don't know how to deal with it, so I'll just keep it going. Now, if you have machine-to-machine -machine communication, you're reading each one, that goes through a dot door, a light changes, it goes down a conveyor, a gate changes, things get pushed out. If something happens automatically, you're moving through this OODA loop because you're using technology to do it much faster than you would in that old known solution. So those are the three keys. And I encourage you to read a little bit more about, about John Boyd, because you can think of RFID as being businesses F-15. Three things have changed in the past year. We're going to talk a lot about these in a second. Number one, global standards have, have stabilized significantly. So the ISO standards out there have finally been ratified, tested. People are producing technology to them. And in the past year, the performance of that technology, we, we've got something internally we call Odin's Law. And it's akin to Moore's Law, but we say the performance of RFID, the sensitivity of tags, the performance of readers, <coughs> the, the form factor, the performance doubles every year. And it's shown that, and it's finally hit a point, a breakthrough point in RFID performance where things are, are incredibly valuable in terms of return on investment. We just finished a great deployment uh, for IT asset tracking for the State Department. And a huge user, big customer. They've been looking at this for three or four years. And they finally said, you know, the standards have stabilized. We're very interested in doing some more things. We're not sure if the technology works. They're getting 100% read rates on hard to tag items like laptops, servers, uh, monitors, that type of stuff. So we're really compelling. <clears throat> so the standards have stabilized. The performance has, has dramatically increased. And the costs have declined. So all of those things have come together to the point where you can see significant benefits over the known solutions. Now you've got to keep in mind that technology, new technology and innovation, it doesn't crawl. It jumps. So people have heard about RFID and, and we followed it for a couple of years. Some of you have